and welcome to Hardware Heaven. Today we are going to be taking a look at Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell The Blacklist. Now this is the newest game in the series. It only came out a week or so ago. So let's get right into today's video. So without giving too much of the plot away or giving any of you guys any spoilers, let's just brush over the well-known storyline of Blacklist. In short, the United States of America is being targeted by weekly terrorist attacks. Why? Simply because they have a military presence in over two-thirds of the countries worldwide. Specifically, 12 people have got extremely fed up with their actions and are now targeting them and threatening them with terrorist action. UK Sam Fisher, who is the newly appointed leader of a new group called the 4th Echelon Unit, who directly take orders from the President. Sam's, aka yours job, is to hunt down these 12 terrorists before the countdown reaches zero and each of the weekly attacks happen. As an agent, you're able to save innocence, break every law possible and do whatever is necessary to complete the tasks. If you don't succeed, millions of people will die. Let's start by taking a look at some of the things I specifically liked about Tom Clancy's Blacklist. Number one, you get plenty of decisions. Whether you want to be stealthy, whether you want to use guns, whether you want to use various types of grenades, whether you want to use your night vision, whether you would like to do a non-deadly kill, you have a ton of decisions, but you are specifically rewarded for being stealthy or for having silent kills. So it does give you that motivation to try and not kill everybody you see. Although it doesn't seem to have as big of an effect as it did in Dishonored because if you killed loads of people in Dishonored, the end game actually got a lot harder. As far as I can tell, the difficulty level doesn't curve up in that way. Although it is the same kind of effect where you are rewarded for being more stealthy or ghost-like. On that note, we'll move on to number two. The stealth works really, really great. You are actually stealthy. If you're hidden, someone can't just walk along and spot you unless you are in plain sight. Being in darkness actually helps, and much like other Splinter Cell games, if you're in the darkness, it's harder for enemies to see you. Now, the stealth kills, you do have a lot of options. You can either use like a non-lethal stealth kill, or you can even shoot people and still kill people in a stealth way by doing it with a silencer or doing it with a knife out of sight. So you still have those options if you are wanting to kill people, you can still make that effort to do it stealthy rather than doing it like guns blazing and firing shots aloud everywhere. Now let's move on to number three. Something that has been a little bit controversial in previous games such as Hitman and one of the previous Splinter Cells, the mark and execute technique. Now I think it actually works really well in Blacklist. You have to be able to successfully execute stealthy or quiet or non-lethal kills or takeouts and then you'll actually be able to mark and execute various people or various enemies in the preceding area. You need to be close to them to actually be able to do it. It's not like you can just snipe one headshot, kill everybody. You need to perform the takedowns, you need to be close enough, you need to mark all of them individually, and then you execute it. I think it's just nice if you're stuck in an area and there's a lot of enemies around you and you really don't know what to do and you've tried the stealthy route, you've tried the silence route, you've tried guns blazing. This is an option you can use just to get past a little hill that you're finding quite difficult. There are some missions that I found that are heavily reliant on this, but there's not many of them. Let's move on to number four. There are multiple paths, specifically whether you want to be stealthy, whether you just want to be kind of silent, whether you want to be non-deadly, or whether you want to be full aggressive. There are different routes that you can take, and not just by the actions that you do, but the actual way you navigate around the world. There are plenty of ledges to walk on, there are plenty of things to hide behind, there are pipes to crawl through, there are rooms to go in that are around the room that you want to go in. There are various different ways to get to your mission objective, and I really like that because it gives you options. As someone who doesn't play that many FPS stealth games and doesn't really enjoy them that much. I like the way that I've given these options. I don't have to run through all the enemies if I don't want to. I can find other routes and you're rewarded again for it. You actually get pop-ups on the screen that tells you how many enemies you avoided and you are given cash for that and you use that cash to buy various upgrades later on but I'll talk about that in a minute. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. 
Number five, I really found the camera control and the aiming to be really, really good. Normally, I'm not that great at FPS. I mean, I played a lot of Halo 1, 2, and 3 when I was younger, maybe some Medal of Honor, and maybe I dabbled on Call of Duty and Battlefield a little bit. I played a lot of Crisis 3 and I played Tomb Raider, but FPS isn't really my strong suit. I get really nervous and I get panicky and my reactions just go completely out of whack but when I play MOBAs my reaction skills are really fast it, I don't know when someone points a gun at my head I get worried I think if you don't get worried then there must be something crazy or you're in the army but anyway I found that the reaction times and everything was a lot better because the camera controls were actually really great as you know I play a lot of PC gaming I don't play that much console but I actually played this on the Xbox 360 and I still found it worked really really well I was really pleased at how I could lock onto targets I was really pleased with how quickly I could spot targets and shoot them if I wanted to the crosshair was actually extremely precise. If I lined it up on someone's head and fired, it was a headshot. If I lined it on their chest, it was a chest shot. I really liked that if you were aiming properly and you shot correctly and you weren't moving everywhere, you could get the shots and kills you wanted. On to number six. The tutorial mission is actually fun. It's more of a story mission. It gives you the background, it tells you why you're there, and you understand why you're angry and why you are Sam Fisher and what you're doing in the world. But it is very tutorial in the sense that it does have the tips and it has hints of what you should be doing, but they're actually displayed extremely well. For example, when it's teaching you how to cover and switch between cover places, the text cover is actually on the car or the roadblock or on the bin or something that you want to hide behind. So it's written on there. It's not like a big obvious tutorial tip. It's more kind of in sync with the game and a little bit more immersive, which I really, really like. Number seven. Cover to cover moving works really, really well. Also, the cover just mechanic in general, I think was really well done and they must have spent a lot of time working on it. Moving from one cover position to the next is extremely easy. You just hover over to where you want to move to and simply press one of the buttons. And I just think that works well because sometimes you're having to duck in and out of cover. You're standing next to something thinking that you're in the cover mode, but you're not. So I really like the fact that we can just switch between each position as we wish to get closer to our target. And lastly, number eight, character customization. Now I mentioned a little bit earlier that you got cash and were rewarded for having stealthy or silent kills or dodging various enemies. Now you can use this cash to actually upgrade your character, Sam Fisher. You can give him new gadgets, you can upgrade his armor, you can upgrade his weapons. It's endless what you can do. And it gets to the point where you do build up quite a lot of cash if you play cleverly. So you can pretty much have any loadout on the character customization screen before selecting a mission that you want. If you know a mission is particularly stealthy, you can customize it to that. If you know this mission's got a lot of enemies in it, you can customize it to that. There is a lot of replayability here because as you're playing through the game, you might not have the loadouts that you particularly want. You can then up the level difficulty on each mission and go back with all of the loadout that you're wanting, all of the gadgets, all of the armor, all the awesome guns. So that's definitely something that gives this game a lot of replayability. So thumbs up. Now let's talk on to some of the very small things that I didn't like about this game. The first thing is that the graphics is really dated. It kind of feels like it was made about two years ago. And that's just one thing that is just a little bit of a niggle to me. I'm very snobby when it comes to graphics. Now, I like a variety of art styles. I like anything from the whole cartoony wow graphics to something like Tomb Raider that's got that very realistic, really nice and clean and really kind of pretty art style. But then I've also liked things that are just like TF2, where the graphics are solid and modern, but they're still really, really super cartoony. So I just felt in general, the textures, even though I installed the HD textures on the second disc, were really low. There wasn't really that much detail on any character's faces, apart from the character Sam that you were playing. Everyone else seemed a little bit plastic, and I felt you know, they could have invested a little bit more time into the graphics areas, because they've obviously spent a lot of time on the mechanics of the game and the gameplay and the story, but maybe they could have just lifted the graphics bar just a little bit. But really, that was my only one thing that I didn't like about it, apart from the fact it isn't really my kind of game, but this is a solid game if you are a fan of the Splinter Cell series, if you are a fan of FPS stealth games in general, if you enjoyed Dishonored, if you enjoyed Hitman, then I would definitely get this game. 
I am going to award this game the gold award simply because the only flaw I found was the graphics. Performance wise, gameplay wise, and generally system wise of the game, I found it to be completely solid and I definitely enjoyed playing it. Thank you so much for watching and make sure to check out any of the other reviews. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. We've kind of done a new format this time, let me know what you think about it. And remember to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos.